Hi everyone, I'm Rincy and I'm one of the contributing editors over at Book Riot. Today I'm going to be doing a new release Tuesday video and I am talking about books that come out on Tuesday, February 6th. So the first book I'm going to highlight is An American Marriage by Tayari Jones. Newlyweds Celestial and Roy are the embodiment of the American dream and the New South. He is a young executive and she is a young artist on the brink of an exciting career. But as they settle into their life together, they are ripped apart by circumstances neither of them could have ever imagined. Roy is arrested and sentenced to serve 12 years for a crime that Celestial knows that he didn't commit. Though fiercely independent, Celestial finds herself bereft and unmoored, taking comfort in Andre, a childhood friend and the best man at their wedding. As Roy's time in prison passes, Celestial is unable to hold on to the love that has been at her center. However, after five years, Roy's sentence is overturned and he's ready to return to Atlanta back to the life that he left behind. This book is being described as a stirring love story that is a profoundly insightful look into the hearts and minds of these three people who are simultaneously bound and separated by forces beyond their control. And again, that's An American Marriage by Tayari Jones. Next up, I have our sponsor for this video, and that is Your One and Only by Adrian Finlay. Jack is a walking fossil, the only human amongst a sea of clones. It's been hundreds of years since humans died off in the slow plague, leaving the clones behind to carry on human existence. Over time, they've perfected their genes, moving away from the imperfections of humanity. But if they are really perfect, why did they create Jack? Meanwhile, Althea 310 struggles with the feeling that she's different from her sisters, and her fascination with Jack doesn't help. As Althea and Jack's connection to each other grow stronger, so does the threat to their lives. What will happen if they do the unthinkable and fall in love. This is a young adult debut that defies genres as well as expectations and this book explores the importance of individuality and love. Channeling books like Never Let Me Go as well as TV shows like Orphan Black, Your One and Only is a story that explores what sets you apart and then fighting to protect it. And again, that's Your One and Only and thanks so much for sponsoring this video. Next up, I have Feel Free by Zadie Smith and this is an essay collection from her. This book is arranged into five sections, In the World, In the Audience, in the gallery, on the bookshelf, and feel free. This book explores a lot of different topics, including what is the social network and Facebook really about, why do we love libraries, and what will we tell our granddaughters about our collective failures to address climate change. Zadie Smith is obviously a well-loved author and she always has really interesting points of view. So if you are a Zadie Smith fan or just like essay collections in general, then check out Feel Free. Next up, I have a mystery book and that is Force of Nature by Jane Harper. When five colleagues are forced to go on a corporate retreat in the wilderness, they reluctantly pick up their backpacks and start walking down the muddy path. But one woman doesn't come out of the woods and each of her companions tells a slightly different story about what happened. Federal police agent Aaron Falk has a keen interest in the whereabouts of the hiker. In an investigation that takes him deep into the isolated forest, Falk discovers secrets lurking amongst the mountains and a tangled web of personal and professional friendships, suspicion, and betrayal amongst the hikers. Jane Harper wrote the book The Dry, which I believe came out last year and was on a lot of people's like favorites lists, especially here at Book Riot. And I know a lot of people have already read this one and said that this one is even better than the dry. So if you are a fan of mysteries and you haven't checked out Jane Harper yet, then there is a new one out there for you. And again, this is called Force of Nature. Next up, I have The Great Alone by Kristen Hanna. This is a historical fiction book that takes place in Alaska in 1974. Ernt Albright, a POW from the Vietnam War, comes home a changed and volatile man. When he loses yet another job, he makes an impulsive decision. He will move his family north to Alaska and live completely off the grid in America's last great frontier. 13 year old Lenny, a girl coming of age in a tumultuous time, caught in the riptide of her parents passionate and stormy relationship, dares to hope that this new land will lead to a better future for her family. Her mother, Cora, will do anything and go anywhere for her man, even if that means following him to the great unknown. At first, Alaska seems to be the answer to their prayers. In a wild, remote corner of the state, they find a fiercely independent community of strong men and even stronger women. The long, sunlit days and the 
the generosity of the locals make up for the Albright's lack of preparation and dwindling resources. But when winter approaches and darkness descends on Alaska, Ern's fragile mental state deteriorates as the family begins to struggle. So Kristen Hanna is the author of The Nightingale, which was a huge best-selling novel. So many people out there love that book so, so much. And if that was you, then she has a new book out today. And again, that's called The Great Alone. Next up, I have A False Report, A True Story of Rape in America. And this is by T. Christian Miller and Ken Armstrong. This is a nonfiction book written by two Pulitzer Prize winning journalists who tell the true story of Marie, a teenager charged with lying about a rape and their journey to figure out the truth. So in August 2008, Marie Marie reported that a masked man broke into her apartment and raped her. Within days, police and even those closest to her begin to suspect Marie. Details of the crime didn't really seem plausible and her foster mother said that the story sounded like she was reciting an episode of Law and Order. So then the police swiftly pivoted and started investigating Marie. Confronted with the inconsistencies in her story and the doubts of others, Marie broke down and confessed that the story was made up and just a plea for attention. So police charged Marie with false reporting and one of her friends even made a website calling Marie a liar. More than two years later, a Colorado detective was assigned a sexual assault case. Describing the crime to her husband, the detective realized that the case had an eerie resemblance to this, to a rape that had taken place in a nearby town. So she joined forces with the detective on that case and the two realized that they are dealing with a serial rapist. Through meticulous police work, the detectives eventually connect this rapist with other crimes that had happened throughout Colorado and beyond. So this book looks at the serpentine tale of doubt, lies, and a hunt for justice while also looking at the disturbing reality of how sexual assault is investigated in today's day. And again, that's called A False Report, A True Story of Rape in America. Next up, I have a short story collection and that is called We Are Only Taking What We Need by Stephanie Powell Watts. This is a collection of 10 stories that look at working class African Americans throughout the South as they search for meaning and strive for direction in lives that are shaped by forces beyond their control. This collection deals with obviously a number of topics including the ties that bind and the gulf that separates different generations from children confronting the fallibility of their parents for the first time to adults finding themselves forced to start over again. So if you are a fan of short stories or you are just interested in exploring stories of African Americans living in the South, then you can pick up We Are Only Taking What We Need. And the final book that I have for you guys today is I Am, I Am, I Am by Maggie O'Farrell. This is a memoir that's told entirely in near-death experiences. So in this memoir, Maggie O'Farrell talks about her life through the lens of 17 different near-death experiences that she had. There was the childhood illness that left her bedridden for a year that she wasn't expected to survive, a teenage yearning for escape that nearly ended in disaster, an encounter with a disturbed man in a remote path, and most terrifying of all, an ongoing daily struggle to protect her daughter, for whom this book was written, from a condition that leaves her unimaginably vulnerable to life's myriad of disasters. This is a book that's being described as for fans of Wild, or When Breath Becomes Air, or The Year of Magical Thinking. Um, if you are someone who enjoys looking at life through the lens of death, then this is definitely one that you should pick up. And again, that's called I Am, I Am, I Am, 17 Brushes with Death. So those are all of the books that I have for you guys in this video. Feel free to leave a comment down below letting me know if you are planning on picking up any of these books or if there's another book coming out today that you guys are really excited about. Otherwise, I will see you guys again next Tuesday with another new release video. Bye!